Uh, hey, Neil, does time move faster at the expanding edge of the universe and slower at the center? I don't know. Mm. Might have to talk to <clears throat> Mm. First of all, the center part, and I don't know. Mm. However, I love the question in mm. terms of the expanding edge. <clears throat> okay, here's something interesting. If you're moving away from me right. in an expanding universe, right. and you have a clock that's ticking seconds, okay? If I watch that clock, consecutive seconds that I observe will come to me more and more delayed. Right. Okay, so when I observe you, it will look like you have slowed down. Right. But as far as you're concerned, you're just running I'm a stop That's right, that's right. That's right. So when she talked about the expanding edge, if you're gonna watch that edge, mm -hmm. you will see things slow down in that place. Right. But it's not an actual edge. Right. It's not a physical edge. It's just a, it's a horizon where you, where, <clears throat> that's all that is. If you go to that edge, now you're in the middle of a new horizon that is itself whatever distance away it would need to be mm -hmm. once you, if you did the math on that. Right. So if any, the way to answer that is if you want to make any of that true, it's the opposite of what she said. Gotcha. You'd be observing objects evolve more slowly on the edge, the, the expanding edge, and you are relative to you. That's pretty dope, I gotta say, mm -hmm. I like that. All right, do you think it's possible we'll find complex organisms like fish in the liquid water masses in the planets and moons of, he says, our solar system? Yeah, okay, so first, a fish is a way complex organism, right? Generally, when biologists speak of complex organisms, they're not talking about fish. Right. They're talking about multicellular, creatures that have might have some appendages like at the cambrian explosion of life when was that 450 500 million years ago right. we went from single-celled creatures rapidly when the conditions changed on earth to multicellular life and that multicellular life had like limbs and eyes and and ten it had features okay that you could talk about and point to right generally we call that complex life i want to find life in the oceans beneath the frozen surfaces of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. And I want there to be life there, mm -hmm. but it's not only if there's water there, Right. okay? I just wanna get thermodynamic on you. Okay, Okay. go for it. All right, as far as we know, mm -hmm. whatever life is, it will require a metabolism. Okay. Right, it'll have to process energy in right. some way. Okay. For it to process energy, in its environment, there has to be a place that has more energy than in another place. Mm -hmm. right. So that there is energy flow. So life does not happen without a transference of energy. Correct. A, and the, uh, technically, you'd call that an energy gradient. Okay. All okay. Right. Gotcha. So that's what you need. All right. And so under there, there's sources of energy from like the gravitational stress from Jupiter and from Saturn and other moons on those moons, and that pumps energy like deep in the center. And so- So what, wait, 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 no. <clears throat> if, if it's hotter in the center than in the edge, then we're good. So you mean the gravitational forces of the planet that this moon is orbiting. Yes. Causes tidal forces. the tidal forces causes an undulation yes. that creates energy heat. Yes. Like when you bend a paper clip back and forth, I back and forth. A better example would be when they say, if you're gonna play racquetball, let's warm up the ball. And what are you doing? You nice. hit, the you hit the ball, you, you squeeze it and it pops back in. It. Every it's time a you deformation do it, and, and a, a restoration. And, the, and every time you do that, you're pumping energy into the ball from your racket. Yeah. That's what's going on to those moons right now. All right, that's that's dude, that's, that's dope. That's really that's dope. dope. And the hottest moon in the solar system yeah. is called Io, and it's closest moon to Jupiter, right. and it's feeling this ferociously, and it's got the most ferocious volcanoes that ever were. Because hot in the middle, the stuff has got to get out, and it, it's it's hurling. And that is that is basically from gravity. That's that's all gravity that's, stress. Gravity stress. Yes, stress of gravity pumping it. And it's, by the way, it's outside of the Goldilocks zone. Right. So we used to think, oh, you need the sun and it's gotta be just right. And no, you just need energy. You need, right. People. All right, wow. there, there you go. God, go. I just love science. It's so <laughs> good. That is just so good. All right. What do you think unlocking the secrets of dark matter could do for us scientifically? Would it lead us to being able to harness it? Wow, those are 
two really big questions. <laughs> How old is he? Is he some kid in a basement trying to <laughs> he's trying to figure something out? A future out. Uh, superhero nemesis well, yeah, in the ma making. We have no idea what dark matter is. I have my own preferences, mm. but my preferences don't matter. What matters is what experiments are active and in progress. And right now, the going thinking is that it is a category of particle that simply doesn't interact with us electromagnetically. So electromagnetism is like light and magnetism and all the things that make atoms stick together as molecules. So you are held together by electromagnetic forces, mm -hmm. all right? That's right. why- And therapy twice a week. <laughs> this would be a category of particles that does not interact with our electromagnetic forces, which means they just pass right on through like you're not even there. Right. But so they how do you observe something like that? Gravitationally. Okay, so we only know, the only reason why we know there's dark matter here is because, well, we have some galaxies, but add up all the matter in those galaxies, it doesn't account for what's going on in this part of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Because you see galaxies from behind whose light gets lensed according to Einstein's general relativity. And you can ask how much mass does it take? How much gravity does it take to lens by that amount? And you come up with a number way bigger than simply counting the, the, the galaxies that are there. Right. Something else is happening. So we call it dark matter because we don't know what else to call it. Mm -hmm. it's, I, like I said, I've said many times, it's really dark gravity. Right. It's literally mm -hmm. dark gravity. Right. We right. don't know if it's matter. The, the folks betting on it think it is matter and there's a new kind of particle that we haven't yet to isolate. That's all. That that, is that's what cool. that is. So all if, right, if so we do now, isolate it, okay. what would you do with it? Or you, or you put it in your hand. No, it'll pass right through your hand because it doesn't interact with your hand. All right. So I don't know how you would contain it. How do you contain it? You need something that interacts not only with our forces, but also with its forces. Exactly. That could be yet another frontier an of right. discovery in the universe. What is that intermediary in fact, thing? If you were that civilization, right. you'd be badass. Oh my gosh. You control not only all the universe that we know about, right. but the rest of the universe that's influenced by dark matter. You'd be able to grab it, make dark matter planets out right, of it, right. if you can make it stick to itself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that would be a powerful posture to purvey. All right. <laughs> can you explain to us in mortal language how the boson gives mass to matter? Oh. So how does Higgs work? That's a lot. So you need to think of mass not as mass in the traditional sense, and not in this explanation, think of it as inertia, okay? So inertia in common parlance is the tendency of something to want to stay in motion. Emotion. But it's also the opposite of that, or, or the inverse of that. It's the tendency of something to not, not to want to move. Right, to stay at rest. Okay. Right. Okay. So inertia is whatever the thing's doing, it wants that's what it that. wants to keep doing That's that. it. All right, that's it, okay. Mm -hmm. Inertia. Okay. Lazy. So you can measure the mass of something by finding a way to measure the inertia that it wields. Gotcha. Okay, so now watch. Let's go to Hollywood. All right. And we're going to a Hollywood party. Pick an actor who like no one has heard of that you know of. Chuck Nice. Chuck <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to a Hollywood party and nobody knows you, you can just go straight to the bar like that. If you are famous and you walk into the party, everyone gathers around you. They want your autograph, they want to take your picture. And you're working towards the bar, but you're moving really slow. You have a lot of inertia. Think of it as the party field, okay? Okay. The party field is giving mass to the particles moving through it. Gotcha. Okay, that party field is like right, a, those is are like the a party, Higgs field. Those are party book goers. Right. The, the, the Higgs field is right. like, they're like the party goers in Los in, Angeles. In Los Angeles. Okay. Right. So you got that? So so if you the more famous you are, the slower you can move through a crowd because everybody wants a piece of you. Right. All right. So in that way, Beyonce has a very high party mass. You have a very low party mass. Correct. And every, to get everybody else in between. Gotcha. So that's kind of what the Higgs field is doing. It is the resistance of to movement of the particles that pass through it. That grants particles its mass, but it's not most of the mass of the universe. Most of the mass in atoms comes from the force fields inside the atom, not from the particles themselves. Wow. Binding energy of the, the, of, of the atoms. So, so yes, it gives mass to quarks and electrons and this sort of thing. It, yes, the total mass of everything in the universe is not represented by the Higgs field. It's just the particles within that, that are out there. Well, that's all really good stuff. Man, yeah. I hope that cleared some things up. <laughs> cleared. <laughs> <laughs>